Let me ask you a question. Yes. You're a good person to ask this question to. Which <laughs> has been harder? Coming out as gay or coming out as conservative? Coming out as conservative has been harder, Candace. So liberals from the LGBT community are attacking me and saying I'm stupid for supporting Donald Trump. They say he doesn't like me. Well, if that's true, then why did he sign this hat and literally send it to my house? He actually, he might like all gay people. I mean, wow. I'm a transsexual man and I support Donald Trump. Political correctness is a cancer to the Western culture. It's safe to say being LGBT is more mainstream and acceptable than ever before. Over the last decade, there hasn't been a year without a high profile artist, company, or politician coming out in support of the LGBT community. And how could we forget? Every year we get to look forward to the super genuine and heartfelt actions of every mega corporation ever because those are a real asset to the community. Even our current president, who by all definitions is extremely far to the right, has waved our flag, starting the movement LGBT for Trump. Don't tread on me. I'm a drag queen. I'm Lady Maga. I'm here to tell you, I love America. This is Lady Maga, a conservative drag queen who's also a Trump supporter. I don't know if you've noticed this lately, but there's been a huge trend of gay conservative commentators coming out of the woodwork on basically any social media ever. Like at this point, I'm sure there's some clean shaven conservative coming out on MySpace. But anyway, Lady Maga is special because he's different than the rest of them. Prominent LGBT conservatives tend to be photogenic, cisgender, traditionally masculine men. And that last part is where Lady Maga is different. Yeah. You could call me well, and that's what it right feels now, like it to wouldn't me. mean anything to me. It's no surprise this type of persona isn't more common among conservative commentators. Lady Maga receives a lot of negative backlash and hate from the right. But in his content, he only focuses on the hate he gets from the left. As a result, he's not super successful as far as conservative activists go. He's not like Blair White or Guy Benson, who pass so well as straight and cis that a lot of their supporters can easily ignore their LGBT status, and they know that. I'm a Christian, a patriotic American, and a free market, shrink the government conservative, who also happens to be gay. My values define me, while my sexual orientation sometimes feels more like a footnote. To be candid, in my day-to-day -day life and work, I spend a lot more time thinking and writing about the failures of Obamacare, for example, than I do about LGBT issues, whatever that term might mean on any given day. Guy Benson makes such a point about his sexuality being an irrelevant part of his persona that whenever he introduces himself, it comes with a 30 second plus disclaimer about how his sexuality does not matter, even though it's literally the title of the video. Anyway, but... I'm straight a proud Christian, and a definite shrink the government conservative. I want God to dominate me, just like any red-blooded American would. I also happen to be gay, and I'm fighting back against the community I was placed into against my will. I was supposedly born in the LGBTQ, ABC, D, E, F, G community, whatever that nonsense is. But I'm fighting back, unlike other gay men like myself of homosexual origins who happen to like other men. Unlike other liberals who identify as attack helicopters or star gender or impoverished, I make a point to not make a big deal of my sexual identity. In fact, it's such a small part of my identity that to prove a point, I recently burned an LGBT flag on social media. Setting fire to that was one of the most euphoric experiences of my life. I truly didn't feel censored in that moment. But the liberal mob descended down on my social media profiles and censored my free speech. They rejected me from my own community, which I am now caring about apparently. And they even called me homophobic for visuals like this. They're really ready to eat their own these days. Good for you, I guess? Anyway, Lady Maga can't really employ the same tactic. He can't use his invisible identity to support his arguments to an audience that supports the arguments but not the identity. 
So instead, he just leans into it. This is really interesting to me because his choice to go into conservative politics as a drag queen rather than a gay male is a deliberate one here. I grew up Mormon and I was closeted for many years and I really felt like I was back in the closet because I am a conservative man and a conservative drag queen. I could have just gone into politics as me, Ryan, a gay conservative, but I really felt like within the conservative community, we needed to kind of spice things up a little bit and open some hearts and minds. He says he wants to spice things up in the conservative movement. He knows this wave of conventionally masculine conservatives isn't diverse enough to actually reach the goal of making conservatism appear more diverse. But this is where all the good faith and respect I have towards Lady Maga ends, because while he could talk about all the bigotry and hatred he faces going to these conservative rallies as a drag queen, he instead tries to make it out as if he's getting more hate from the far left, and he's actually being accepted with open arms by the far right. He's trying to say that Trump supporters at these rallies are the ones really accepting him more than the LGBT community ever has. And based on what I know about conservative culture and how these rallies work and how the LGBT community works, I don't think that's the case. Now I'm sure Lady Maga has been ostracized from the drag community on the basis of his political beliefs as he claims he has been. You know, he claims he's been violently rejected from his community and that actually doesn't sound too far-fetched. Drag queens have been through a lot in the last 40 years and I'm sure they wouldn't be too supportive of someone in their own community supporting the very party that let them die during the AIDS crisis. Now this is gonna be a really controversial opinion, so please don't give me too much backlash for this, but I think gays and drag queens were oppressed at some point, especially during a time where there was a giant health crisis happening. Crazy, right? And obviously that can manifest in an angst that festers inside of the LGBT community towards conservatives as Reagan was the one in the 1980s who was completely ignoring and refusing to do anything about something that was believed to only affect gay people. It was willful ignorance of a plague on an extremely oppressed and subjugated community. However, instead of understanding the ways in which conservatives weren't exactly helpful to the LGBT community and how that can manifest in spite today, Ryan instead uses this as a way to frame conservatives as the more accepting party, and liberals as the ones who are ready to eat their own and go against members of their own community on the basis of some different ideas. But what if it's true? What if conservatives are the accepting party? I mean, liberals are the ones posting videos to social media about exploring their gender, exploring their sexuality, figuring out new pronouns and new labels. Democrats are the ones talking about the gay population versus the straight population. Maybe what we need is conservatives who just talk about people. Everyone is equals, everyone on the merit of their character, not on the merit of their identity. Conservatives don't really talk about identity. They don't talk about the gay population versus the straight population. Maybe what the LGBT community needs is less labels and people who are willing to look past the identity. Being LGBT in America presents some challenges of varying difficulty. According to the FBI, one in five hate crimes are against an LGBT person, with 2018 having the most anti-LGBT hate crimes of any year since 2008. Since 2014, anti-LGBT hate crime figures have been going up, accelerating between 2016 and 2018. That being said, hate crimes are being reported more frequently as people begin to accept LGBT people as a minority capable of being unfairly targeted. Though that doesn't account for the sharp incline in the last few years, and I'd argue that our government has something to do with this. 
more specifically our conservative administration. While Trump did in fact wave an LGBT flag with LGBT for Trump poorly written on the front, within literal minutes of going into office, all mention of the LGBT community was scrubbed from government websites. In recent times, he's pushed to cancel plans to count LGBT people in our 2020 census, pushed for doctors to discriminate against LGBT patients, and just last month, there was a push to deny access to homeless shelters for transgender people. Almost every single month since he took office, President Trump has pushed to roll back or adjust policies that aim to protect and serve LGBT Americans. This is something he's been doing constantly on a month by month basis. Stop right there. As a gay conservative man of homosexual origins who does not make it my identity unlike liberals, I'd like to point out that President Trump has elected the first openly gay man to a cabinet level position. He's truly fighting for our rights and forwarding the gay community's rights. Obviously, this decision nullifies the weekly attempts the Trump administration has made to roll back LGBT-related legislation. As a gay man, a conservative gay man, a Christian even, I know a strong, powerful, accepting president when I see one, and I definitely see that in President Trump. All right, that's just wonderful. America's favorite gay man who happens to be a conservative and hates identity politics despite centering his career around at number 14. But I don't think appointing a gay man with the energy of a Verizon wireless phone salesman is enough to really counteract the effects of an administration constantly attacking the LGBT community. But as a homophile, I mean, gay man, um, I don't want any pro-gay laws in the books because that means I'm getting more rights than straight people and I want it to be separate but equal. I mean, um, I mean equal, like I want equal rights. Well, if these anti-discrimination laws covered all of these forms of identity, that means everyone would be covered against discrimination on their immutable characteristics. That means white people, black people, gay people, straight people, etc., would all be protected. But under this administration, we're still not subject to the same laws and equal representation as straight people are. And we still have the gay panic defense, which, to be fair, isn't used very much anymore, but is still a legal, actual thing you can use to defend someone and absolve someone of murdering a gay person just because the person you murdered was a gay person and it freaked your straight feelings out a bit. Not to mention, as recently as last year, there's data available showing that Democrats support gay marriage overwhelmingly more than conservatives do. These problems that gay people face, especially in southern or more rural areas, are not something the majority faces, so it's not really equal. But liberals make an entire person's life about their sexuality or gender or two-spirit or whatever. It's to the point where you see Democrats eating their own and shunning gay men for daring to think differently with the same type of rage you'd expect from a 1950s conservative caricature. Well, Democrats aren't the ones trying to harm your ability to adopt children or seek refuge in a homeless shelter if you need it. A lot of these protections and laws that the Trump administration is trying to repeal are all Obama-era laws and protections. But why would I, a white conservative Christian gay man who only cares about facts and not feelings or identity, support literal slave labor in this country, having our hardworking Christian business owners bake wedding cakes or sign adoption papers or whatever for gay people, even though it goes against their religious beliefs? I guess the question I have to ask is, why is it okay for someone to deny services to a specific minority group on the basis of their feelings? I assume you agree that people are born gay, being a gay man yourself as you like to claim, so why is the burden placed on the LGBT person to find a different bakery rather than the Christian who chooses to open their bakery to the public? Why is the power in that circumstance given to the Christian and not the customer who's going to a business trying to exchange money for goods and services like any other customer would? In doing this, you're prioritizing the rights of the religious business owner over the customer who happened to have been born gay. And honestly, I think this should just be equal and universal. And if you're willing to let Christians discriminate when it comes to housing, employment, and commerce on the basis of their personal beliefs, then would you be okay with ultra-liberal states like California refusing access to homeless shelters or jobs for straight white men? I doubt it. It's okay. Just let the free market figure it out. Okay, I think we're done here.
It's always been a belief of mine that people who grew up in accepting households don't really understand the voice that homophobia lodges deep into your brain from a young age. Growing up this way, your sexuality begins to feel like an arm that you want to cut off. You want to escape it, you want to get away from it, you want it out of your life, but it's attached to you, it's part of you. And you feel as though no matter where you go or what you do in life, you will always be reduced down to your sexuality by other people, no matter what you try to do about it. And so the last thing you want to do when you think these things is have someone talk to you about your sexuality. Growing up around homophobia makes you believe that all discussion about sexual identity is negative because you come from an environment where all discussion about it is negative, regardless of context. What someone with that background wants the most is for their sexuality to only be brought up on their own terms. They don't want other people to talk about their sexuality, they want to be the only ones who can bring it up in a conversation. Because since they are accustomed to being judged over it, they assume that anyone who's talking about it is judging them in some way, or reducing them down to their sexuality. I believe this is what caused someone like Lady Maga to be drawn to these conservative rallies. Since now that homophobia is generally not accepted in society, most conservatives tend to keep it quiet and avoid talking about LGBT identity altogether which is exactly what an LGBT person from a less accepting background would want. Democrats tend to focus on identity, whereas conservatives tend to avoid this topic altogether. But just know that behind closed doors, it's not Democrats who aren't accepting of LGBT people. Multiple gay staffers have reported feeling the need to remove their wedding rings, taking down photos, or relocating their job altogether to be farther away from conservatives because they fear losing their job. That fear of losing your job doesn't come from nowhere, and I'd actually say it's a pretty logical fear to have when you have an administration that's actively dismantling protections for LGBT people on a month-by-month -month basis. But at the level of an average conservative activist, all that matters to them is not feeling like they're being called out for their sexuality. So these more invisible issues fly under the radar. I think this is something the left really needs to improve on, using less labels to define the LGBT community. Labels like LGBTQQIDAAPPO2SBNBGNCGGAPPO+. Let's start using acronyms like the GRSM community or Gender Romantic and Sexual Minority community. Using acronyms like the GRSM community means you don't need a label other than knowing you're different in some way. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to just say that you're a sexual minority instead of having to pick between a whole host of sexual labels, that would be how the left could appear more accepting to these people. Well, that'll be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for having the patience for this video to come out, as it's been two months since my last upload, but these videos take a lot of time for me to write, and also I work full time on top of making these, so it's really hard to squeeze all this into my schedule, especially when where I'm filming is like 70 miles from where I live. I can't really film inside of my tiny apartment, so it takes a while to make these, so thanks so much for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I read all of my comments, and I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.